Good morning. Is that maybe what's his name? Properly. As we settle down, a warm word of welcome to everyone. It's great to see you all again. I hope everyone had a lovely week. Post uh, Easter weekend, Passover. What a blessing it was last weekend. Just wonderful. I think um, before we start, I want to. Uh, Hanley, today is a special day. Yesterday. Yesterday. Oh my goodness. I got that wrong. It was Hanley's birthday yesterday, so um, yeah, congratulations, wonderful. Wonderful. Do you feel older? Not, okay, great. <laughs> and then there's also another special person, um, Andre van Blerk. <laughs> it's your birthday Again. today as well, right? Again. Tomorrow, oh my goodness, yesterday, tomorrow. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Anyone has a birthday today? <laughs> yes, so oh, wonderful. Oh, great. Okay. Happy birthday. <laughs> wonderful. Bless you. All right. Um, so with that, uh, who's here for the first time? Any new visitors? Hello, welcome. Great. Nice to have you. Thank you for coming. They say we've got the best coffee in town that we serve. We don't roast it, but we, we do get it from out, outside. But please join us for coffee, everyone. It'll be nice to connect us as well in that way. Then just a few announcements. Um, on Friday morning at 10.30, right here at GMC, Soft Landings is going to host a music morning. It's going to be special music. And our friends from the 8 o'clock service cordially invite all of you to come and participate in that morning. That's, of course, if you're not working full-time or have other engagements, but please, if you want to come and enjoy some beautiful music, please, uh, please feel free to join us. Then, um, just a reminder that the bank account details, GMC has changed quite a while ago, so if you haven't made those adjustments yet, please, please take note. And then also, if you use SnapScan, it is working, and that money goes straight into the new bank account. So you're welcome to use SnapScan as well. All right, I think that's all the, all the announcements for today. I want to read Psalm 24 as we prepare our hearts for, for our worship this morning. A Psalm of David. The earth and everything in it, the world and its inhabitants belong to the Lord. For he laid its foundation on the seas and established it on the rivers. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, 
who has not set his mind on what is false and who has not sworn deceitfully, he will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of God of Jacob. Father God, we lift up our voices to you today. We open our hearts and we declare that we love you. And we declare that, that we are searching for the truth and we know that we've got truth in you. And Lord, we, help, we, we ask that you help us to set our hearts to you and that we will seek your kingdom and its righteousness before we pursue anything else. We ask you, Lord, bless us this morning as we sing to you. Bless the message that Pete's going to bring. And we ask you for soft hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, music team. Amen. Let us stand and sing. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship his holy name. amazing to read how David says, bless the Lord, O my soul. And he said it at a time that he was kind of freaking out. And thank you that as we sing these words, it just stirs something in our spirits as well. Because you are holy, you are magnificent, and you are worth praising every second of the day. 
So bless the Lord, all my soul and all that is within me and forget not all His benefits. Oh God, you are so good, so good. God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. Spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of light. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies unfold. In the vapor of your breath, the planets fall. Everybody's on the 
That you promised over and over you never leave nor forsake nor leave us abandoned if you feel a little abandoned or lost this morning let these words resonate with you god will never no never ever leave you nor forsake you or leave you alone he is always there
Lord, this morning we declare that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth. You are above and beyond all things. And Lord, we belong to you. Lord, we know that the whole earth belongs to you. Everything in it, all material things, all precious stones, everything belongs to you. The animals belong to you. Lord, we the church, we belong to you as well. And we declare this morning our utter dependence on you, Father God. Lord, we are here to worship you. 
We acknowledge that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord, help us just as Abel offered his sacrifice to you. He gave his best out of a heart of added gratitude. Lord, we declare our devotion to you, our love for your church and your mission on earth. Help us, Lord, as we surrender all. Lord, that your kingdom will be built. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. If, we can, uh, if I can ask the team to help us with the offerings this morning. Thank you. I surrender all to you, my all to you. Thank you. If we can please stand as we pray. Father, we thank you for your son Jesus who died for us on the cross to save our sins so we can have eternal life. You are the ultimate example of what it is to give. We thank you for that gift, Lord God. And as you inaugurated the church, we thank you for people who's willing to give as well so we can continue to build your church. And Lord, as you give, we give. And thank you, Father God, that as we give, and as people praise your name because of that blessing, your name is exalted. All for the glory of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Eh? Bless you. Thanks, Willem. It's nice to see the young adults doing some work. Eh? <laughs> Lovely to have you here. Yeah, good morning. It's good to be together. And uh, nice to have the rain falling, eh? I'm always reminded of uh, people who come to George and they think, oh, what a great place to buy a house. And then uh, <laughs> April, May, June, July, August, September, October, we have rain. <laughs> That's why it's called cold and wet. Eh? But uh, yeah, bless you. Uh, Christ at work, yeah. 
And Rona, it's good to see you here. Yeah, Mervyn went to be with the Lord last Saturday at 3 o'clock. And uh, here we are, hey? So just to, to know that you are surrounded by lots of love and, and blessings today, Rona. Yeah, and we're so grateful to have Mervyn, hey? Great Baptist pastor who is with the Lord. He used to intimidate me a little bit because I always used to find myself checking, you know, as to whether I was on, on line with the Word, you know, especially with a Baptist pastor. And then he'd put his hand up sometimes, he'd go like this. <laughs> and other times he'd go like this. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I will miss him. So if you can just remember, run in your prayers and uh, much blessings for you. And then just a warm welcome to folk that are visiting. Uh, it's lovely to hear the rain outside, so you can go nowhere for another hour, which is marvelous. <laughs> I've got you. No, I'm joking. <laughs> At least another half an hour. But uh, nice to see the Watsons. Bless you. Yeah, good to see you guys. I wonder if you feel like I feel after the death and resurrection of Christ, after Lent, where you might ask yourself the question, what now? I don't know whether you ever feel like that. I've got a little slide that says, what now, if you want to put it up. Now, there we go. <laughs> I don't, it's, a, it's a strange feeling, you know, you go through all of this, uh, this emotion and this commitment, you know, to give up the chocolate or the whatever else, the coffee or whatever else you decided to give up. And then suddenly you come to Sunday and then Monday and there's kind of a feeling of what now? And, uh, you know, that kind of feeling happens in our lives at many different times. We get to a place where maybe you've achieved something in terms of your goals, or you've run the comrades, or you've done the two oceans, the marathon, and you've trained, and you've done it, and now you've got to the end of it, and then Monday morning comes, and you kind of think, well, what now? <laughs> and uh, there is that feeling of, uh, you know, in a sense, sometimes of disillusionment. Sometimes you wonder as to whether you're going to actually make it to do the next thing that God calls you to do. And there's a little bit of that sort of space that you have in your soul and your heart. And I think that the disciples had exactly the same kind of space in their hearts. You know, as Jesus had died and risen from the dead, they got to that point, having had him reveal himself to them, there was that time afterwards where we see in the scriptures where it said many of them didn't actually believe. And some of them drifted away. But there was that question of what now? And I want to take you into the story of where Jesus takes them after the what now. And it's up to the Sea of Galilee. I don't know whether any of you have ever been up there, but I would, I would possibly think that the place where, where the disciples were going would, would have been to the house of Peter. It's in Capernaum, or they call it Kephanachum. And it's on the, let's say the north side. I don't even know it's east or south because it's so difficult to understand Israel, but it's on the, this side of the, of the Sea of Galilee. Can I just say that? Not on that side. Okay. So if you've got Jerusalem down there, we're going up to the Golan Heights, it's on this side. And I can imagine that that's kind of where I think it could have been that Jesus was meeting with them. But remember that he had given instructions for them to meet, to meet them in Galilee and possibly also on the beach. And so we'll get into that just now. So they are despondent, get the picture, they've gone through trauma, they've lost their Messiah, there's a lot of things going on in their minds, there's a lot of things up against them, and there really is that big question, what now? And so we move into the scriptures in John's Gospel, chapter 21, and I'm going to read, read, read you from verse 1 of, of John 21, and then also just uh, share a little bit about how Peter was reinstated from verses uh, 15 onwards, a little bit later on. But it says this, afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of thunder. <laughs> I like to say that, the sons of thunder, the sons of Zebedee. They were also known as the sons of thunder. And two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. <laughs> Talk about that. I'm going out to fish. We'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them. And I think he chuckled as he said this. Friends, <laughs> haven't you any fish? I mean, that's the worst thing to say to a fisherman, don't you say? Don't you know? 
And I can, haven't you got any fish? <laughs> no. <laughs> they answered. I don't know how they said it, but I could imagine. No. <laughs> he said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. Yeah, right, says the fishermen in their heads. When they did this, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish in their nets. And then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garments around him, for he had taken it off, because he was fishing, obviously, uh, and jumped into the water. That's also quite funny. You're like, you wrap your outer garments on you, and then you jump into the water. I mean, let's just be real. It's funny. Don't you find it funny? <laughs> let me get dressed, and then let me jump into, into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. And when they landed, they saw a fire burning, a fire of burning coals there with fish on it. I love this part. And bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. Remember the fish on the brow already, by the way just in case you didn't notice. <laughs> Bring some of the fish you've just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah, so just a few things, a few thoughts, a few insights, and hopefully you will remember that uh, I always enjoy the story for many different reasons, and you also see why. And I uh, also believe that it's important for us to remember stories. Like we tell the story of the death and the resurrection of Christ, we need to tell the stories. I also encourage you to tell the stories to your children and your children's children. Grandparents, tell the stories to your children. Isn't that a good thing to do? And uh, I'm also reminded of the fact that there are some incredibly important and powerful things that Jesus does post-resurrection. And we need to see them and pick up on them and understand them because they talk about redemption. I don't know whether any of you have been watching the series on Moses on Netflix. And you'll notice that some of the story is a little bit different to the story that we know because it's a kind of a mishmash of different uh, traditions and different religions and different thoughts that have been put together. So don't be thrown off by that because the message is the same. All right. And it's a message of redemption, which is an incredible thing that you think about the fact that the chosen and <laughs> the story of Moses and there, I think there's another one on the story of Jesus, are all on Netflix at the moment, along with all the other, can I use the word, crap, is that all right? <laughs> That's on Netflix. Can I use that word? Because I don't know what else to use, but it's kind of like the only word that comes into my brain. It's so difficult to find something useful to watch on Netflix. But what I find interesting is that there is a moment when, G when Moses comes down off the mountain, and that's another thing, but anyway, burning bush on the mountain, whether it was like that or not, that's how they portray it. But there was a moment when he recognized and realized that he was the, he was the minister of redemption for the people to free them from slavery. There was a moment when he shifted literally in his heart and his soul and his mind, and because of that, God could use him. And, uh, and, and it was at a time, as you know, he was running away. He, was, he found himself, you know, an alien in many respects. He had killed a man with his own hands, and he'd done some terrible things and had found, found himself retreating. And this very same man is used by God to bring about redemption. And when he gets that, redemption begins to happen. And remember in the story, it's not an easy redemption. It's redemption that means that they've got to run for their lives, literally after Passover, which is what the Jewish people will celebrate when? Yes, next week, the 22nd of April. So they will celebrate. It's a month out, or the following, two weeks' time. It's a, it's, it's a month out because of the calendar, and that's a whole long story for another day. But literally, they celebrate to this day the fact that God brought redemption for the people and, 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 and freed them from slavery. And so Moses was part of that. 
And when we look at the life of Jesus, we see a story of redemption. And the story of redemption is not a story that he just holds to himself. It's a story that he gives out to others. We've got to see that clearly, friends. He chooses 12. Unfortunately, one lost. One was lost. But he chooses these men and also women to bring about a redemptive story that we still know to this day. A redemptive story that changes and transforms us and enables us to be who we are. However, we need to also see the, see the fact that they lost the plot. They forgot about the story of what they needed to be doing. And we see them returning to their nets. Now, when you look at these guys, you think, well, maybe it was just, you know, some arbitrary uh, disciples. Some of the 500 that had a kind of just got a little bit disillusioned and, head, and had headed up to Galilee. Remember that Jesus had said that he would meet them up there and literally meet them. That, those were the instructions to meet him there. Not, nothing more and nothing less, and we'll get to that. But you need to notice that these guys are kind of the chief kahunas of the disciples. We've got Peter, James, and John in that group. We've got Nathaniel, and Nathaniel is a very interesting uh, disciple. Remember, he said, what, what good can come out of Nazareth? And yet, this, the very same Nathaniel recognized Jesus as the Son of God, as the King of Israel. Jesus said of him uh, that he was one without unrighteousness, that he was pure in heart. That's the way that Jesus described Nathaniel. And we also recognize that Bartholomew and Nanuel, Nanuel, Nathaniel, <laughs> there's a lot of my tongue, Nathaniel were the same people. And so when we talk about Bartholomew, literally Nathaniel was bar Tome. He was the son of Tome. And that's why he was also known as Bartholomew. They're the sons of Zebedee, the sons of thunder. I mean, just think about that. These guys had also run away in many respects. They were going back to their nets and some others as well. But there were eight in all that are recognized in the scriptures that we're reading at the moment. And remember that Jesus had given them instructions, all of these guys' instructions, to meet him in Galilee. Those were the instructions. Nothing more and nothing less. And so they arrive in Galilee, and I can imagine Peter, James, and John, and all the rest of them arriving in Galilee, and they suddenly get in there. In fact, Peter gets into his mind that uh, there's something better to do than to meet Jesus. Let's get back to our nets kind of thing. Let's go back to the thing that we know, the thing that we used to. Jesus taught us for three years to be fishers of men, but hey, man, let's go and be fishers of fish. And it was quite significant to me that Peter says, let's go to the nets, and the others follow him. There's like serious peer pressure going on here. You know, it's like Peter says, well, listen, guys, I'm going out to the nets. What about you? And in the word of God, it says that they followed him. There's an incredible intentional challenge that we all have, friends, when it comes to peer pressure. It's that kind of feeling of like, well, you know, if they're doing it or if he's doing it, then I can do it too. And it's almost as if there is this pull, this peer pressure pull that pulls them out into the place where they shouldn't be. And sadly, Peter is leading them. And remember, he's disillusioned. Remember that he has denied Christ. He's done all of those things. So you can understand what's going on in his heart. You can understand, in a sense, some of his humanity, which is not different to our humanity, by the way. Am I right? You know, I was just thinking about how we are so confronted in our day and age by peer pressure. And more young people than old people, but we find ourselves in the same place. I mean, social media is at us all the time. TikTok. I mean, did you know what TikTok was, you know, 10 years ago? You would say TikTok meant that the, the, the clock was going TikTok. You know, TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. Now we know what TikTok is. Instagram, whatever else, Facebook and everything else. And we are so motivated and so drawn into that space of social media kind of draws into us into another place. And I'm not saying that it's wrong, but I'm saying that very often we can so, be so easily drawn into something that is not really good for us. And I was thinking this morning, who I wonder, there must have been one person initially that, that thought about TikTok, another who initially thought about Instagram. And now, I mean, they're multi-billionaires on our behalf, by the way. <laughs> we pay for them to have lots of money. But anyway, that's another story. And so, you know, friends, what I'm saying is peer pressure is so easy. It's so easy to go with the flow. 
And unfortunately, the disciples, along with Peter, went with the flow, and they go back to the thing that they feel okay with, the thing that they're used to, the thing that they felt comfortable with. They go back to their comfort zone, and they go back to their boats. And, uh, and it's interesting and significant because as they go out there, the word says to us that they were out there all night long. <laughs> I mean, this is a long time. And I sometimes watch these guys fishing, you know, you go down to the beach and they're, they're going, man. <laughs> you know, all day and, you know, they might fish the whole night long, but they're there and they're fishing. And I, I take my hat off to them because I've never, ever, ever, ever caught a fish that's bigger than this. <laughs> Quite literally, I've tried with all of my heart this size, yeah. <laughs> I remember going fishing with my boys. I'm seriously not a fisherman. I'm a fisher of men and women, but not a fisherman. And I would always say to my boys, listen, let's go fishing, man. I'll just pray like anything. Say, Lord, please just put a big one on the end of my rod. And I'd throw it out and I'd come in and a little guppy would be there, you know. And even a little guppy has a little bit of a fight on it. Sometimes you think, you know, maybe I've got a big one, yeah, you know. And you reel it in and then at the end of the rod is this tiny little thing. But the sinker is the thing that you're pulling in. <laughs> and you know the story. It's a very uncomfortable thing when you've been out all night, all day, and you haven't caught a fish. And, uh, you know, I can imagine the struggle and the challenges and what, Pete, what was going on inside of Peter's head, you know, thinking to himself, oh, Lord, you know, I, I've just messed it all up. I mean, I know what's going on right now. You know, here I am on the boat with the boys, and I've led them astray, and all the things that would have been going on in his brain and his mind. And then I thought about the fact, you know, that, that, the, that the Lord, everything, all things were created through Jesus. We know that. I mean, he made the fish. Am I right? He made the sea and all of it. We sang it just now. It was a beautiful song, that billion story. It just made me feel so emotional. But just about the fact that God has made so many things that tell us of his glory and his beauty and everything else. And I can imagine Jesus sitting on the beach. This is just in my mind, by the way, not biblical or scriptural or anything else. So don't shoot me down. Is that okay? I'm just creating a picture for you. But, you know, these guys are throwing their net out, you know, whole night. And Jesus is just orchestrated. He's sitting there. He's there still on the beach. And he's just organized that school of fish, 153, just to be a little bit further than their boat. <laughs> And he's probably watching and giggling, like, you know, and he knows exactly where the fish are. <laughs> Dudes, I know where the fish, I made the fish. There's a whole school of fish, and they're listening to the Lord. Oh, this is where we need to go. Don't go near that boat. We must be over here. I'm making a story, but I'm telling you the story because that's exactly what happened in many respects. You know, and then this guy on the beach, I mean, can you imagine? You're like a proper, a proper fisher person. You're a fisher person, woman, man, and you know, you know the drill. You know how to throw the net out. I mean, they had been fishing there for years. They knew where the schools of fish were, you know, and yet there was nothing in the net. And then this dude who's sitting on the, on the beach, they don't, know, they don't know who he is, by the way, at that point, says to them, like chirps at them. I mean, it's the worst thing if somebody who's a stranger shouts at you from the shoreline and says, do something. It's like, listen, I know, hey, hey, wait a minute. I know, I'm a fisherman. Don't tell me what to do. But this guy that they didn't recognize says, throw your net on the other side of the boat. How big is the boat? Come on, friends. I mean, really, you know? How big is the boat? And we've been on those boats, and literally probably three meters, that's about it, you know? Onto the other side. Throw your nets onto the other side. And I found it quite significant that these guys were obedient to a stranger. Think about that also. You know, they recognized something that was going on that was deeper than what was going on in the boat. That this voice that they heard was a voice of instruction. This voice that they heard was one that had a, a greater power than they had heard before. And they were willing to, to listen to that voice. I want to say, friends, you know, when we are distracted, when we are disorientated, when we've gone back to our old things, when we've fallen away from the way, there's a point where Jesus comes in and says, throw your net in on the other side. Don't be foolish, and we've got to listen to it. And, you know, so often I've seen so many businesses go down, literally because they're not listening to the voice of the Lord. 
They're in there with their nets, and you know, I'm not listening to them. I'm not listening to that. I'm not listening to that. I'm going to just carry on doing the thing that, I'm, that I thought I should be doing all along, and you just keep on going, and you've got nothing in the net. And Jesus says, listen to me. Follow me. Be guided by me. Put your net on the other side. And it takes guts and determination to do that, friends. It's a commitment. It's a, it's a gut thing to say, Lord, I will follow you. I'm not going to follow the crowd. I'm not going to uh, follow the peer pressure thing. Everybody else is investing in this and that and the next thing. But Lord, you say I need to be doing this, and that's what I'm going to do. We need to be hearing him, friends, in this day and this age, more than we've ever heard him before. And the Lord says to them, throw your net in on the other side. And we know the story. Their net was so full that they could hardly pull it in. And it says it was full of 153 large fish. Not small guppy fish like I caught. Not these little things. Large fish. And there's a whole story with that we won't get into today. I think just the miracle is Jesus saying, hey man, they counted the fish. There were 153 and it was a miracle. Amen and hallelujah. God is a God of provision, friends, and when we are with him, he has, he has stuff to provide for us. I don't want to sound like a prosperity minister, but I want to really say, you know, God has provision for us. we just got to know where to put the, put the net. We've got to trust him when he says, put the net over. Yeah, trust me for this, because that's when you start to see results. And so they pull that net in, and 153, and we can go into all sorts of detail, but the bottom line is there were 153, and they counted every single one. And literally, Jesus was saying, hey, <laughs> you know, if you want provision, if you want uh, something from, uh, of your life, then follow me. It's a beautiful thing. Ah, oh, whatever, it's beautiful. Whatever, it's beautiful. Amen. And you know, the, the, the value of, of this is, remember that there's still this moment and this time when they still don't, didn't recognize him. And so he draws them into a place. After Peter jumping out the boat and doing all sorts of other things, he draws them into a place on the beach. And uh, remember, he's already made a fire. And he's lit the coals. And you know that I've done this before, so forgive me for those of you that have seen it before. But I think it still has, has value. <laughs> Maybe not for a while. But uh, he's on the beach, and uh, his disciples are there, and uh, he's lit a fire. They, they could probably see the fire from the, from, the, from the sea. Sort of wondered who was making the fire on the beach. But, but Jesus was there. And, uh, and the thing that I love about this story more than anything else it's just the way in which Jesus approaches uh, disillusionment. The way that Jesus approach, approaches uh, a moment when we've let him down. The way that Jesus approaches us when we are human. And so often in the mantra, in the mindset, in our minds, we have this God that points his finger and says, you dirty, rotten scoundrel, and look at you, you know. But he's not that God. He invites them. He says to them, come and have breakfast. Hopefully this works. Woo! There's fire in the house. There was another time, if you remember. Sorry, this is a bit fierce. Let's turn it down a bit. Oh, I turned it off. Sorry, I'm getting there. It's very sensitive. (laughs) I didn't do this at the first service. You're not supposed to tell them all my secrets. There was another time when the word come was used. And I don't know whether you remember that. It was a time when, again, possibly the disciples were a bit disillusioned. I had to use normal oil. I would use olive oil normally, but Debbie didn't allow me. She said you must use normal oil. I think Jesus would have used olive oil. I know, I know. <laughs> Don't judge me, Deb. <laughs> but there was another time, coming back to the story, where Jesus said to the disciples, Come, follow me. Remember that time? They were at their nets, remember? 
And they were disillusioned again because they had not been chosen for rabbi school. And we know that any young person, as a young person, would have loved to be part of a rabbi school. And they had gone back to their nets. They had not been chosen for the A class, you know. Jesus says, come and follow me. And it says that once they left their nets, they were excited, they were enthusiastic, they were so, so enthused about the fact that they'd been called. And then he finds them again on the beach where they're disillusioned, where it's been tough, hey, being a disciple. Where it's been a little bit hard and, you know, the things have been rough and they've gone through the death and resurrection, it's hard and they've run away, got a little bit delusioned. And I thought about that as well, friends, that sometimes, you know, in our Christian lives, we find ourselves in a place where we've been following for a long time and we've been going with the Lord and there's those moments where you can get a little bit delusioned, isn't it right? Disillusioned. Delusioned. <laughs> Is that another word? Disillusioned. And, uh, and the Lord says, you know, as he's sitting on the beach, he says to them, come follow me the first time. And now he says to them, come and have breakfast. And so he uses, look where my spices went. He uses... <laughs> Uh, there we go. <laughs> I'm like, what is that guy's name that does the cooking show? Just a little bit of spice. You can use um, inner parmens, garlic, and, and herb. does very well with, with, with hake. Really nice. And folks, if you're wanting a good bargain at pick and pay, 74 dollars 99 you can buy hake. Beautiful hake at discount price just for today. And that's not all. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh my goodness, I better concentrate, you, otherwise I'm going to cook the thing and it's going to be in trouble. Can you smell the fish, by the way? Not yet, it's coming, eh? Can you guys online smell the fish? <laughs> Good morning. I don't really can smell the fish, but it's cooking. I just need to put some uh, herbs on the other side. Anyone who wants fish afterwards, by the way, you're welcome. You can have a fish bra and a sami, actually, a sami fish bra is very delicious, by the way. Normal bread, and <laughs> I'm checking. <laughs> yeah. So, the, you know, as we understand and know from the scriptures that Jesus draws them back to the beach. And uh, it's, it's quite funny because he's cooking his own fish. And he says, bring a little bit of your fish to cook with my fish. Don't you love that about Jesus? You know, Jesus is not exclusive not saying like, you know, I've got the stuff and you haven't. He's saying, you've got the stuff, friends. You've got it. You know, you know what it's all about. Bring some of your stuff with you. I love that about Jesus. You know, use what you have. You are gifted. You are, you are filled with the Spirit and everything else. Just remember that you have something to offer as well. Bring some of your fish and add it to my fish. And so they spend some time, and Jesus is there, and he says, come and have breakfast. And he invites them, friends, into a place of security, of safety, but also a beautiful, wonderful learning space. Because this is the place of redemption. And we sometimes don't, we miss this, by the way. We, we hear the story of the, the fish briar and everything that goes with it, but this is a powerful story of redemption because it's literally empowering the disciples who had run away, that lost sight of the very thing that they were supposed to do. And Jesus brings them back together on the beach. He says, come and have breakfast and let me reinstate you, Peter. Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep, feed my lambs. We know what the story, three times. He reinstates him. He re-empowers him not to go back to the Sea of Galilee, but to go out and to make disciples of all the nations, Matthew 28, 19 and 20. And that's what we call to friends. I mean, this season, you know, this, this meal, again, reminds us of the fact that warts and all, if we've made mistakes and we've failed and we've done stupid things and we've disowned and disconnected with God, He wants to reconnect with us on the beach. He wants to reinstate us. He wants to say, you know, forget the former things, man. You know, focus now on the future. Focus on the things that are important for you and for me. Don't, don't go around with all your wounds and say, well, I'm so wounded I can't do anything for Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus, for my wounds. Because the wounded healers can do a lot of stuff. Amen and hallelujah. There was a book written by Henry Nguyen on exactly that topic. 
But I want to encourage you, friends, to know that this was a redemptive moment for Jesus, a moment for empowering his disciples to say to them again, don't lose sight of the very thing that I've called you to. Don't go back to the boats. Don't go back to, to you know, what you used to do, the business as usual. And remember in their brains, they were stuck in that moment of the what now? What now, Lord? What now? And there's this beautiful redemptive moment of, of empowerment. There is a beautiful redemptive moment of empowerment today. <laughs> if you get it. Not just the fish bra. You remember me doing some silly things on a Sunday. And hopefully you'll think, oh yeah, Pete said this about that. And this maybe will connect with your brain and whatever. That's fine. But more to think about the fact that God wants to use us, friends, for his redemptive purposes on earth. If you look around you right now, you will know, as I do, that the world is in chaos. There's stuff going on in our world right now that is scary, friends. You know, there are wars going on. There are, there are um, elections that are coming at us very soon and very shortly. And we've got to find ourselves in a place of readiness, in a place where we're saying, Lord, I'm hearing your call for me to come and have breakfast with you, to be reinstated, to be re-empowered, to be reused possibly for the sake of your glory. And here I am, warts and all. I'm willing to be one of yours, Lord. I'm willing to be counted with you. And Peter was willing to be counted with him to the point of death, to the point of being crucified upside down in Rome, along with every one of these other disciples, by the way, reinstated, Willing and committed for the cause, willing and committed to do what God called them to do because he loved them so much to say, come and have breakfast. And so I'm inviting you. I've got lots of fish here. You know the two lo loaves and fish story? <laughs> and I'm joking. If anyone wants to come and taste some fish, you are most welcome. It's probably just done perfectly now, so I'm going to turn it off. There we go. You don't want to cook fish too much. Then it gets very like, blah. But if it's just at the right... You want to, don't want to cook too little as well, then it's also, oh. but I think this is maybe just right, except for this piece, the last one. The last shall be first and the first shall be last. Yeah, so just in closing, it's an invitation. And, uh, you know, with all invitations, it's saying, the Lord is saying, come, come to me, all you who are, who are heavy laden and come and find rest, <laughs> come and find love. What did Jesus say to Peter? Peter, do you love me? Not, Peter, have you obeyed the laws? Have you done this or that? No. Do you love me? If you love me, then go and feed the sheep like I fed you. Do you love me? Give them breakfast. <laughs> Give them love. Do things differently. I'm tired of doing the same thing, you know, like as if we got to do, 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 do. No, invite people to a meal. Come and have breakfast. Come and meet me on the beach. And some of you need to meet Jesus on the beach this morning, literally. Just, uh, you know, the what now in your life. You're getting to a place where you're not sure of what you need to be doing next. The Lord is saying, saying to you, I know where you need to throw your net. It's not on that side, it's on this side. I know the struggles that you're going through right now, and I'm with you. You're not alone. I'm meeting you, literally, on the beach. So if you want to just open your hands, sometimes as um, Alexander reminded us of last week, it was just to open our hands in an, in an attitude of re receiving. If you want to, if you don't want to, it's fine. But just think about you and the Lord sitting on that beach, him calling out your name, whatever your name may be. For me, Peter, Deborah, come and have breakfast. Him inviting us into a place of redemption. And not just leaving us there, but in empowering us there to do bigger, greater things for the sake of the kingdom. And I thank you, Lord, so, so much for the way in which you handled and you dealt with your disciples. It's such an example, it's such a testimony to me of how you love us unconditionally, with great love, with great wisdom with great mercy, with great grace, and you call us in, you invite us in to a place where we're empowered, Lord, to do your work on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we know the fields are white unto harvest. The laborers are few. 
And I ask, Lord, that you would count us in around that fireplace to go, Lord, and do your will on earth as it is in heaven. Pray, Lord, for our city at this time. And thank you, Lord, that we live in this beautiful place called George. We know there's an enormous storm coming our way, and we just pray for protection as well as that storm heads towards us from Cape Town. Oh, Lord, in your mercy, just hear our prayers. Pray for the many people, Lord, that are finding themselves in places where they have no shelter or no food. And Lord, use us as your hands and your feet. We are called, Lord, to proclaim your love to others. Help us to do it with all of our hearts. Help us to invite them to come and have breakfast like you did. Thank you, Lord, for Peter reinstated, restored, and made to be one who went out, who went out and did the things that you called him to do, even although it was uncomfortable. May we find ourselves, Lord, doing the things that you've called us to do, even when it's uncomfortable. So thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. Thank you that we are here, Lord, and we receive your Holy Spirit as we open our hands. We can't do it on our own, Lord, so we ask you just to fill us again with your Holy Spirit. Fill us to do your will on this earth. And we pray it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Bless you. Thank you for listening. You're welcome to come and have a fish sami at the end of the meal. <laughs> Philip and I had one the last service, and it was delicious, by the way. I think. But you don't judge me if the cooking is not good. <laughs> I think it's okay. <laughs> don't forget to go to Pick and Pay, $74.99 <laughs> for a pack of fish. <laughs> we had fish and chips for today. Bless you. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Hanley. Thank you. Amen. This is such a beautiful hymn of devotion to God. So let's stand and sing all the beautiful verses together, shall we?
So Lord, as we close this time, I pray that you bless us as we go from this place. Thank you, Lord, that you call us to the beach. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, you call us to come and have breakfast. And may we, every time we have a meal, just be reminded of your presence. Guard us, guard us. Pray for those that are in business that are just wondering which place to put their nets. And just trust the Lord to, to know where to throw the net. Just pray for that right now, Lord, and just ask that you be with families and friends. Be with Rona as she goes from this place. Help her to know that she's not alone, Lord. We also just uh, remember the J.K. family as well in this week as they mourn the loss of Anne J.K. And we will be around her with great love in this week, around the family as we remember her. So be with us as we do that, Lord. So we go in peace, we go in love, and we go in grace and mercy. And we go with the Lord, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, both now and forevermore. Amen. 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 There's lovely tea and coffee afterwards. Please let us know what you think of the coffee. I won't tell you where it comes from. <laughs> Bless you. Have a lovely day. Bless you. Bless you. For those of you doing two oceans next week, strength and prayers, eh? <laughs> Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His soul.